a version of a scientific manuscript that is shared on a public server prior to formal peer review and publication. Preprints are gaining popularity across many scientific disciplines with almost half of papers published in 2021 in Journal of Cell Science, for example, being posted as preprints on BioArchive. Preprints are increasingly being recognized in career moves and grant applications as well. But what happens once your paper is posted on a preprint server? If you're thinking of posting a preprint and are wondering what to expect, we'll talk you through the different steps involved from posting to commenting, what you might expect from a journal, and what innovations are happening in the preprint space that might shape the future of publishing. Once your preprint has been submitted to a preprint server, such as BioArchive, it becomes a permanent record and it can't be removed. The preprint is assigned a DOI and can be cited at this stage. Although some papers remain as a preprint and are never submitted to a journal, formal publication is the goal of most authors. Although authors can post their preprints before submission to a journal, most still favour posting at the same time as they submit to a journal. And most journals these days won't consider a preprint prior, prior publication, but it's still worth checking this with your target journal. Your manuscript is now available for people to comment on. Much commenting on preprints occurs privately via email exchanges or personal conversation, but there are also many routes for public commenting. Many preprint servers allow comments to be posted directly on the site, but more discussion of preprints happens off the server, perhaps most notably on Twitter, where readers might post a one or two line summary of why a preprint is interesting to them, or a longer Twitter thread analyzing the experimental design. Alternatively, websites like Prelights, run by the company of biologists, provide a platform specifically for commenting on preprints. Early career researchers apply to become prelighters. They can then regularly choose preprints of interest to them and provide some insights into the context of that new preprint, and why it's an exciting finding for the research community. Authors of the paper will often engage with the prelighter to answer questions about the paper, and this discussion is posted together with the prelight. So why is preprint commenting useful? It's useful for lots of different reasons. For authors, informal comments can help with manuscript revisions, perhaps even improving the paper before submission to a journal, making the journal publication process smoother. In addition, comments from people the authors might not otherwise engage with can give authors a new perspective or allow them to reassess the context in which they view their research. And of course, public commenting on platforms like Twitter or Prelights increases the profile of the preprint, potentially leading to more views and further interaction. For readers, public commenting can provide context for the preprint and provide an indication as to the validity of the work. Providing comments or feedback on a preprint can also be beneficial for early career researchers, acting as a useful entry-level step to peer review and putting them in touch with researchers with whom they might not otherwise interact. So how does journal submission fit in with preprint posting? As already mentioned, most authors submit to a journal at the same time as posting the preprint. Some journals, including all the company biologist journals, even have portals to allow co-submission. Still, some journals will approach authors of preprints directly to encourage submission, and a few even have dedicated preprint editors who search the preprint literature for potential submissions. Sometimes authors worry about getting scooped after posting a preprint, and so some journals, like ours, have in place scoop protection policies. These generally state that if a competing paper is published after submission of a manuscript to a journal, this won't con constitute grounds for potential rejection. This protection usually applies from the day a manuscript is posted on a recognized preprint server, as long as it's submitted to the journal within a specified time frame. Once formally submitted to a journal, if appropriate, the journal will coordinate peer review. And if your paper is eventually published, then ideally there will be a link from the preprint to the final version of the paper. So preprints can fit well within the traditional journal structure that you're familiar with. But what's happening outside this structure and how might it shape the future of academic publishing? The company of biologists involved in one such initiative called Review Commons. Authors submit their manuscript to Review Commons who then coordinate journal independent peer review. The authors can then choose an affiliate journal to which they submit their manuscript and reviews. And rather than coordinating their own peer review, the journal uses the Review Commons reports to decide whether or not to publish the paper. Manuscripts must have been posted on a preprint server before submission to an affiliate journal, and in return, the journals provide the authors with scooping protection from the date of posting the preprint. Once a paper has been peer reviewed, those reviews and the author's response will be posted by Review Commons to BioArchive or MedArchive when authors transfer their refereed preprint to the first affiliate journal. This brings us to the topic of preprint peer review, where reviews are posted publicly alongside the preprint. Peer review is different from commenting in that it's a more formal and structured evaluation of a research paper by experts in the field. 
Preprint review can potentially offer a number of benefits. It can increase diversity compared with normal peer review, where editors often rely on a relatively small pool of referees, while largely from the global north. And it can give early career researchers more opportunity to develop this important skill. It improves transparency of the review process, and it can reduce the likelihood of reviewers including unfair, inappropriate or personal comments, at least where they have to sign their name to the review. It can give authors a chance to publicly rebut comments, and it can also help readers to find and interpret relevant preprints. Although it's not yet widely practiced and raises the questions of how journals fit into such a landscape, there have been some interesting experiments in this area, including efforts such as peer community in and PRE review, which facilitate peer review and curation of preprints. The journal eLife is also integrating public preprint review with journal publication. At the end of this video, you can find links to these initiatives if you want to find out more. A leading organization in the area of preprint review is ASAP Bio, a not-for-profit group working to drive open and innovative communication in the life sciences. A few of their experiments include trialing crowd preprint review, where interested researchers provide pre uh, feedback on a preprint, which is then collated and posted as a public review on that preprint. Setting up the preprint review a recruitment network, which enables willing researchers to share preprint feedback as a sample of their work reviewed by participating journals. They also set up a working group that developed a set of principles for creating, responding to, and interpreting preprint feedback. There are other experiments out there too, looking at how to encourage the public review of preprints. It's a bit too early yet to evaluate the success of these initiatives or to assess whether they'll complement or compete with more traditional journal peer review. But the fact that there are so many tells us that the landscape is changing and preprints are the driving force. Mm -hmm.